our students. Today, we're going to talk about Federal Reserve Bank. Um, Federal Reserve, the U.S. invisible hand for world dominance. I'm U.S. of Bonaparte, and uh, uh, I do a lot of consulting, and here's my email, and associate professor in finance. So this lecture is about one chapter of my book, and the book includes three sections and one appendix. Uh, the first section is the origin of, of, of Federal Reserve and world dominance. The second section, uh, the Federal Reserve monetary policy impact and the Federal Reserve challenges and reform. Each section has a two chapters, so basically six chapters. Uh, six chapters, the first one about the origin of Central Bank and how the Federal Reserve control the world and things like that. I'm going to talk about the first section, about the origin of the bank. Uh, here is some information about me. You will have the slides also in Canvas. And I have a PhD from the University of Texas at Austin. <clears throat> I have a book about crypto and blockchain, ESG, Federal Reserve. I have also a book about the Black Portfolio. I won the DE award and uh, uh, other awards. My research was featured in New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Financial Times. So the, the idea that I'm trying to make here is I am um, invested a lot in this uh, book. And I know a lot of things about Federal Reserve that I would like to share it with the world. So my motivation to write the book is in November 22, I was talking with my students about the election, midterm election, and they want to vote. Uh, and I decided not to vote, actually. And they asked me why. And I said, because who control? I care about the economy and who cares about, who controls the economy? The water and oxygen is the two things we need to live. Any economy needs interest rate and money supply. And both of these are controlled by the Federal Reserve. So if the interest rate determined by the Federal Reserve and what and, and the money determined by Federal Reserve money supply. Then why I'm voting for the president, I need to vote for Federal Reserve. It's like a water and oxygen for us. Eventually I did not vote. And uh, and I was right, the Federal Reserve keep raising the rate, some banks fall, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, as I'm recording this video, was falling and market is down because the Federal Reserve keep raising the interest rate. The other reason is to educate and reach out, to educate the people that the Federal Reserve does control the world and, and the US economy, and to reach out to people to make it, to offer a Federal Reserve reform. Now what's a central bank? Central bank, just bank, just simply, it's just simple. It's a bank of the bankers, the bank for the bankers. They give the monies and they take this money and they give, take a spread, and give it to the people. Uh, the Federal Reserve has a monetary policy. The government has a fiscal policy, a government spending for goods and services. That's a physical policy. Central Bank has a monetary policy, which is determining the money supply and the interest rate. What is monetary policy? Monetary policy, as I just said, determine the level of interest rate and money supply. And the Federal Reserve, Joe Paul, uh, in this case, the chairman decide that. The chairman has a board, and we're going to talk about that as advisory board, but the Federal Reserve chairman decide, determine the policy. Uh, the goals for the Federal Reserve and objective are two, uh, to stabilize the economy at low inflation and low unemployment. That's the goal of monetary policy. The goal for a fiscal policy is to help the government to re-elect in the next election. Here's some quotes about the Federal Reserve by Ron Paul. A libertarian uh, congressman and by James, uh, President of the United States. Uh, whoever controls the volume of money, which is the Fed, is any, in, in any country, is absolute master of all, of all industry and com commerce. So that means the Federal Reserve. It's no coincidence that the century of total war coincided with the century of central banking. So central bank control the world. Uh, JFK, J John Kennedy, uh, was the first person to challenge the Federal Reserve. I will be the second. Uh, and he was, uh, when he became to be president, he was, he was not aware that the uh, 
Federal Reserve Control America, and then he uh, have an order, executive order called the uh, numbered 11110, where he want to take some power from the Federal Reserve, but this did not go because uh, he got assassinated. There are some rumors the Federal Reserve contribute. I don't buy these rumors, but definitely he was fighting the Federal Reserve. And he want to have a reform. Since then, nothing happened. I hope with your help, we will have a, a public opinion and reach out and, and make some uh, reform in the Federal Reserve. I'm going to talk about chapter one and section one has two chapters, the origin of central bank and chapter, chapter two, uh, the Federal Reserve and the world dominance. I'm going to talk about chapter one, a little bit about chapter two, maybe one or two points. So the chapter is, here's the outline of the chapter. Here is the history of banks. The first bank was in uh, 1200. And then we have uh, Bank of Amsterdam, the most modern bank, and then Bank of Ham Hamburg, and then uh, we have a Bank of England uh, came. And then we have the Federal Reserve here in 1913, uh, Federal Reserve established. And now we have uh, our Federal Reserve, the biggest in the world. Look to the inflation before the Federal Reserve in the United States. So you see spikes up and down, up and down, like inflation, deflation, inflation, deflation, inflation, deflation. But when the Federal Reserve came, start focusing monetary policy, the inflation was high, but then start slowly going down. Here's because of COVID. Here's one dot of deflation, but now the inflation is steady. There is no deflation. So there is a stabilization, which is I give them that. Uh, Bank of England is the most uh, famous one as of today because the United Kingdom was uh, controlling uh, India, the Middle East, and others, uh, uh, British imperialism. Uh, and then this is what makes them popular. But after the Second World War, the US took a lead and uh, uh, become to be the financier for Europe. Here is a list of banking institutions before uh, 1900. So if there is a country of interest, you can read here. Uh, if there are reserve historical stops, so, so we have some banks before the 1913, but the 1913, the first time we established the Federal Reserve, it was nothing, just research. I think FDR, FDR give more power to the Federal Reserve because of the Great Depression in 1929. Uh, and then after that, they start getting more power till uh, the 50s, they have a complete power. Uh, and then inflation, deflation in the 17 18s. And during Ronald Reagan, President Reagan, uh, the Federal Reserve managed to lower the inflation. And that's something good about the Federal Reserve. They did a very good job. Now, Federal Reserve has a three nest key function. Conducting the nation monetary policy, key um, entities, Federal Reserve Board of Governors, 12 Federal Reserve Banks, like Bank of Kansas City, Federal Reserve Open Market, and the Federal Reserve uh, System, U.S. Bank. There are 12 banks, and, and here are in the map, you can see Bank of Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and uh, we are Kansas City, number 10. That's what we are. We are, uh, if you're in Colorado, that's what we are belong to us. Uh, the Federal Reserve in February 23, when I did the book, uh, their balance sheet is almost three times the US government, about $8.4 trillion. Um, here is a treasury for the Federal Reserve, and you can see in it 22. 2020, sorry. The Federal Reserve bought a lot of treasury. When the Federal Reserve buy bonds, that means giving money supply to the economy. How the Federal Reserve give money to the people? Mm -hmm. They buy bond, and they sell bond, sorry. They sell bond, and that becomes to be liability. When they sell bond, they take money from people. That lower in the supply. When they want to give money to people, they say, here is a thousand dollar, give me your bond. Here is a million dollar, give me this piece of bonds. So when they want to increase the amount of supply in 2020, what they did, 
they went to market and start buying bonds and give dollars to uh, institutional banks and the household. They also give money directly to the banks with the, some rules. And here you can see the asset mortgage because the crisis in 2008, they already increased a lot and now they put a lot. Here you can see the liabilities, how much liabilities for Federal Reserve increased recently. And then the largest Federal Reserve in the world is US 8.7 trillion, uh, then Bank of Japan 5.8, and then Bank of France 2.1, for example. You can see Bank of England no longer big. Uh, here are the name of the uh, previous shares from 1934 when they start having power. Till the last year, chairman, which is Jeremiah Paul, and he got um, uh, and he got elected twice. Here is when they start, what month, number of months in office, and uh, if they serve two terms. Here I calculated the stock market retain SMP by every chair, and you can see that the highest return was during Paul Vocal. And uh, then I guess William Miller, Joe Paul also high, Yellen, Yellen during Obama administration uh, first term, and then you have a Thomas McCarthy. Here I find that interesting that non economists the stock market has a higher return during non economists than uh, during economists. The stock market did 7.5. So it seems to me that it's better to have non-economist uh, Federal Reserve Chairman than economist. Uh, chapter two, here is the outline. I just want to say that World War One and Two make the U.S. Uh, world dominance in the world. And then what helped the U.S. to dominate the financial world is the CME. The CME emerges as a leading future contract. All this oil and gas and the wheat and corn uh, are traded in the CME in Chicago with the American dollars, which give the U.S. more control in the world uh, currency. The CME established 1898. Uh, this is a picture of uh, King, I think King Faisal uh, Abdulaziz with the President of the R in the ship of uh, Quincy, USS Quincy, when they said all the oil in the world would be sold in American dollar. So the price of oil will be determined in American dollar. Now it's the 23, I'm in uh, March, 23, I'm recording this video. Now the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, they try to challenge this. And the Saudi Arabia start moving more toward China and they wanna use the yuan, Chinese currency, as a medium of change to serve their oil and gas. Here are the, how much the oil and gas in demand and, 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 and how many million barrel a day they sell with almost, before COVID was supposed to be 100 million barrel a day. Another challenge for the Federal Reserve, which is good, is the cryptocurrency. If cryptocurrency become to be adopted by the world, then the US dollar will lose dominance, the Federal Reserve will lose dominance. And uh, here's a story about the cryptocurrency just started in February, Friday, 31st, 2008, in an email at eight o'clock, six o'clock, 18, 16. And by Satoshi Nakamoto, where he said, I've been working in a new electronic Cash system that's fully peer to peer with no trusted third party. And then we have a Bitcoin. If this uh, cryptocurrency emerge as a leading uh, medium of exchange, then the Federal Reserve will lose a lot of power in the world. Uh, this is supply of Bitcoin versus supply of the US dollar. And you can see the supply of Bitcoin is steadier than the uh, US dollar inflation, which is a change in the money supply. It varies. But for Bitcoin, it's more steady and went down because half is, and then went down more. So there is less uh, inflation in Bitcoin. Here are the questions for the chapter. I want you to answer them short and sweet. And once again, be wise, buy the rumors, sell the news. Thank you so much for uh, this lecture, and I hope you enjoy it. And 